very good morning and thank you very much. Uh, we will start. We will start uh, the the session. Uh, the uh, hundred twenty eight anniversary scientific medical congress, Sri Lanka Medical Association pre congress session on workplace based research and writing. I am sure that this is a very very uh, interesting uh, area where today's context, the research in health, research in medical sciences, research in workplace, uh, workplace is a uh, very important uh, aspect or uh, we uh, discuss at every moment, every place. Uh, to start the first session, there is a distinguished panel, panel of speakers and the first speaker I would like to introduce Dr. Anuruddha Padini. Dr. Anuruddha Padini does not need any introduction but as a custom, uh, I will just introduce him as a consultant, he is a consultant pediatric neurologist attached to Lady Ridge Bay Hospital for Children, Palambu and he is the academic head of department of pediatric University of Rajarat and he is also the current president of the Government Medical Officers Association. He was a recipient of uh, Ishanov, uh, Aishanov Fellowship in 2012. Uh, Dr. Anuruddha Padaniya, he will speak on introduction to workplace based research, the role of society for health research and innovation in workplace based research. First of all, I should uh, thank Sri Lanka Medical Association, especially the President and the uh, Committee for inviting us to do this workshop and this is uh, basically the first session on workplace based research and uh, the role of the Sri is to innovate a mechanism of uh, doing research in Sri Lanka under the title of workplace based research. So, the evolution of the concept actually I should acknowledge uh, and appreciate Professor Jennifer Ferra as the President of the Sri Lanka Medical Association invited us to do some work on the workplace based research from a very academic perspective. So, basically the entrusted task was to generate uh, the or to recognize the research done in Sri Lanka under the context of workplace based research. And uh, when we received the letter, few of us sat together and did some brainstorming and then we did some literature review to see whether there is a term called workplace based research and we couldn't find anything and uh, there had been certain uh, titles going uh, close to that but there was no material available for us to finally conclude that the definition of a workplace based research, especially we search in relation to the health sector. In the meantime, we had another <coughs> hurdle to achieve that is uh, from doctors association, the government medical officers association, we introduced a research allowance uh, which is uh, currently 35 percent of the basic salary of a doctor, fairly a sizable amount of uh, allowance in order to <coughs> promote research and to generate research culture among the professionals or medical professionals. And after introducing this, we just wanted to see whether that is being directed in the correct line. What do you mean by the correct line? Is now the <coughs> we wanted to evaluate that whether the research allowance is used for the benefit of the individuals because uh, as medical professionals we have to have a career pathway as individuals. At the same time whether the research allowance is granted from the national coffers uh, so therefore when you take the entire health sector as an one institution whether that research whatever we do uh, with the money utilized from the ministry is used for the betterment of the system. So we wanted to innovate a protocol or a mechanism where the research allowance is used or utilized uh, for the benefit of the individuals as the system and whether we can guide it at the same time whether we can audit it and see whether it is in the direct correct line or not. With that idea we <coughs> evolved the concept once again to reach all these three objectives we wanted to innovate uh, a, a, a mechanism which will look after all three. So once again I should thank for SLMA for taking uh, the initiative of directing us to do this kind of a innovative work. So how to do that was the issue. 
and uh, the real challenges were first of all we wanted to define which will bring the concept under the objectives of the or the intention of us as I told you in the past and then we wanted to analyze the strengths and weaknesses uh, to see the platform to conduct the workplace based research in Sri Lankan setting. Thirdly, we wanted to see, to do a situation analysis to see what amount of workplace based research have been done, done in Sri Lanka with uh, whatever the definition we are going to evolve, whether what number of work research will come under this territory, what proportion will come under that territory. Fourthly, we wanted to see how much of the research allowance is used in order to achieve this uh, research coming under this definition. Fourthly, to see the utilization, beneficial utilization of the research allowance uh, from a scientific perspective. Currently, the ministry also, the finance ministry also expect our research to be done, uh, which will have some benefit to the health ministry as well. So, because of that, but the current path is purely administrative. When you submit a research allowance proposal to the health ministry, it goes to the DDG ETNR directorate and then to the DG, then to the secretary health. Finally, a committee chaired by the secretary health is deciding whether it is uh, going to be useful to the health ministry or not. And usually our health uh, secretary is uh, not competent uh, from that perspective to see to evaluate uh, whether these uh, research are useful or not. So basically what is happening is her ad hoc decisions or her personal experience and ad hoc decision which is not that scientific is going to decide whether this research is going to be useful or not. At the same time when you are doing an ad hoc thing various kinds of influences can take place and make it happen or can get uh, <coughs> rejected. So because of that we wanted to develop a scientific guidelines in order to recognize our research done at the from the very beginning itself whether those are coming under the title of workplace based research concept or category. With that in mind we did a brainstorming uh, just to see how we can proceed and uh, the brainstorming ultimately ended up as a uh, Qualitative research, we wanted to consult eminent people um, locally and internationally and uh, the, not only that, uh, the ministry consultants and the medical officers who are in and out of research and then to develop a proposal. So to develop the objectives, first our objective was to define the workplace based research. Secondly, to uh, developing the workplace based research concept that can be implemented within Sri Lankan health sector and whether we can go beyond health and to other arenas with this concept because any organization would uh, nowadays earlier they were spending money there was a budget line for research but I think uh, even the Mobitel uh, group is here they have almost all the private companies they have research and uh, innovation budget and so because of that because the innovations are there to uh, upgrade whatever the performances they have at the moment. So why not we introduce the same concept to the health sector as well and whether we can set an example to the other sectors beyond as we had done in Sri Lanka. And obviously for the practical reasons we wanted to develop a scientifically guiding uh, document and a mechanism to make the research allowances used towards the workplace based research because currently the research allowance is already granted the circulars I should it's implemented whether we can uh, direct our doctors towards this workplace based research is the exercise we are trying hard. So the qualitative research we did uh, the key informants were as I told you the people from policy making administration academia and then from clinical practice from public health uh, we interviewed a lot of people in the scientific way in order to develop the definition which is which I am going to share in a moment. So the contents of the interview is it was a direct open-ended questions 
same set of questions to everybody and uh, the questions included the to directing towards a definition or idea, so thought provoking ideas about the definition and then uh, their experience with regard to the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats with regards to establishing a workplace based research platform in Sri Lanka. These are the set of questions we asked and uh, it is lengthy questions is part of it and then uh, first objective was to formation of a definition. So, first of all we went to the participants uh, or the experts to consider in depth interviews. Then secondly with that interview we developed a single definition and uh, then uh, using the Delphi technique we circulated among the through emails uh, several rounds for us to finalize all agreeable definition that is how we evolved a definition to this. So, we look actually during the discussion we basically highlighted the value of workplace based research from different perspectives. One is whether we can do some work on improving the patient outcomes, then system improvements were thought about, then cost effectiveness and efficiency because health financing is a major challenge worldwide. I am not going into details, but every one of us knows and then to improve the efficiency, efficacy and these are aspects which we can research in and innovations can be brought in. Then the professional development individuals uh, and uh, people anyway had to go through uh, as a compulsion on the PG lines, postgraduate lines and other things in medical practice and they are now going into the subspecialties, super specialties and branches branched levels and Sri Lanka can be a center of excellence to a certain extent up because we are internationally accredited. So, the professional development uh, has lot of obligations and whether we are doing it in the correct uh, way is what we wanted to visit. Then to re promote the research culture and that is another challenge because uh, Sri Lankan clinicians are very much reluctant to do research and our details will be uh, presented you all later on from our same panel and uh, what number of research done in Sri Lanka and what the utilization of the research allowance. Uh, so, how the present status will be talked to you, then the policy development. So, basically if you were to consider from four lines which the, our discussion is going to be today is that the first thing is to uh, define the concept. Then the second thing is to analyze uh, and we have done our findings, we have done some quantitative surveys also into this uh, analysis. Then the situation analysis of uh, Sri Lanka with regard to the research activities taking place, we uh, got hold of uh, the places where research is done and we are actually we had done a research into the research actually or audit into our research and then to develop a way forward and we got uh, in our panel uh, Dr. Sumal Nandasena, he is actually heading the ministry unit at the NHS Kalutara, he will basically with these findings suggest us some way forward for us to brainstorm and finally prepare a pathway. So, this is the definition before I wind up, this is uh, the research conducted by any employee at their workplace relevant to the materials, resources and the factors influence their services which are leading to enhancement of the productivity and the quality of the services. This is what through the Delphi technique we could so far finalize <coughs> and uh, we are going to publish this definition today and we have defined the workplace as this way. So, this is the currently agreed definition. So, for medical professions, uh, we are a little bit deviating research conducted by the medical professionals at their workplace relevant to the materials, resources and factors influence their services which leading to the enhancement of the productivity and the quality of services and again the workplace is defined for the medical professionals. Just to tell you uh, highlight the concept of the workplace, how it is going to discriminate from the other research is that they are we are expecting or the experts expect it to be designed locally. Example is the medical officer would plan a research to improve their quality of services. So, it will benefit the 
doctor or the medical professional as well as the system. Then the engage in investigators of the perspective workplace itself. So it's locally done as you see workplace itself. So we get together and do research like uh, research we do to analyze the workload of the OPD. Then it is opportunity driven because uh, when you are working in the sector you see the opportunities to do research. So therefore you need not to think hard it is within you and that will basically visit yourself in order to generate good results. So it is going from routine surgical evaluating of the routine surgical proce procedure and when you analyze it then you might your thoughts might go towards evolving a new process to improve the whatever you are doing. So that might generate certain results not only benefit the Sri Lankan system that might even generate something uh, internationally. So, the, that will uh, encourage the change of practice on a scientific platform. This is where we are directing from the medical administration, clinical side, uh, public health side, all these aspects are considered. So, the potential and the need for workplace based research in health sector, we think that uh, the health sector is rapidly evolving into specialties, subspecialties, super specialties in its diverting into various ramifying into various directions and it is what is accepted is evidence based practice. So, anyway now even uh, diabetes, um, hypertension, even the kidney disease we do not know the real etiology. So, therefore, the what is available is the evidence based practice. So, we had to have the uh, ability or pattern of uh, providing or collecting evidence in order to change our practice. Then the you need to audit and complete improvement and we have a lot of criticism about it but we have to do something to revert it. Then this is a very important issue the rise in patient expectation it is not unique to the medical profession it is unique to all professionals. The public expectation from a professional is very uprising due to the available technology and the public ability to the public to access lot of information they come prepared, they study and come to us and they ask certain questions we do not even expect them to ask. So, therefore, we do not want the doctors to embarrass in front of the patient and we want to handle this uprising patient expectation very nicely otherwise uh, it will be difficult to attract and retain patients in that territory. Then optimizing the patient care even in the resource poor setting and is very important and development of subspecialties and super specialties I told you earlier. So, with that in mind, so we are going to have analysis I am not going to do that uh, our next panel will do analysis of the research conduct in Sri Lankan health sector because we introduced the research allowance now the trends are changing people are trying to do research for we have encouraged them there is incentive. So, whether we are going in the correct direction for the best interest of all of us. So, but the unfortunately currently the granting of research allowance the process is norm based as I told you by sometimes non-medical people and we do not uh, let down the non-medical people even a medical person. Now, I am a pediatrician I cannot evaluate research which is done in microbiology. So, it had to be appropriately <coughs> uh, analyzed and, uh, and then we want to ask these three questions after introducing the research allowance whether there is a growth in the number of research or whether the quantity, quality both whether they, whether they have gone up and uh, is the research conducted in line with the research priorities of Sri Lankan health sector. I think even the WHO is promoting to have research priorities and uh, most of our colleges whether we take everything into account and have a generic platform to discuss to recognize the research priorities administratively or otherwise academically or which whether we have not whether we have done needs to be revisited. So, therefore, developing a way forward is what is attempted today, identifying the research priorities for Sri Lanka and available resources and uh, the deficiencies in order to gap them and <coughs> workplace based research definition to encourage them to do and to uh, basically <coughs> help them to assist them to do research. So, that is why we formed a society called Society for Research and Innovation. This had been a brainchild long ago, but uh, we took the initiative of establishing such in order to fill this gap. 
the concept actually evolved in our minds when uh, we saw this institution that is called Miloda, that is called IFS Institute of Financial Studies. Financial Ministry of Finance has introduced this uh, academic institution in order to visit their financial decisions because um, financial decisions have impact the risk if you analyze the risk the impact may be in millions or billions so therefore the any decision which are taken mostly politically so therefore they wanted the academic platform to investigate into them academically so similarly health also costly exercise whether we are doing it in academic way that is the uh, same concept uh, may be in a different uh, way we are presenting uh, and to audit like Ministry of Finance. So, this is how we evolve into Sri. So, <coughs> so, we are actually trying to fill the gap as I told you and hopefully we will be able to and the people can volunteer to join with us. We are a small team at the moment with the backing of uh, eminent people like Dr. Palita Bekong and them and uh, WHO and them are willing even to fund and encourage this kind of activities. This is a gap we are going to fill. So, this is the beginning of this concept. Thank you very much.